so I came here to start a business. That was 30 years ago. As I stayed on and became more involved with the island society, the people, etc., it be started to feel more like home. Um, and then, of course, we had the bomb in 2002, which changed things dramatically again. It was a pretty emotional time. We'd heard that the terrorists were from Java, that they'd been fundamentalised. I actually knew the district they came from, and I knew the area was deeply poor. And I felt if they'd had hope, that may not have happened. And so I thought, OK, Bali could just as easily be radicalised. We had plenty of villages up in the mountains, often um, a bit violent, and I knew they would be the target. So that's where we started, in the tough towns. We started with scholarships for the most deeply disadvantaged, and from there we started working into the schools, developing a much stronger curriculum. But those villages, through educating the children over the last 18 years, getting them out into the workplace, their whole economic outcome has changed. We've had 1,032 graduates so far go through the program, and each of those students is part of a family who's enjoyed this benefit. COVID in Bali has had a major economic impact. Income in Bali, or at least 80% of the incomes in Bali, are directly related to tourism. And we don't have a social net. So it has left people to manage as best they can. And the people who were already deeply poor are worse off because they're, they're part-time jobs working as gardeners in villas or even making baskets for the tourism industry. Those jobs have all gone. But for the middle class and the emerging middle class, the results have been utterly catastrophic. People who've been educated in their own lives and gone out and got jobs have suddenly been thrown into a situation with no income. The problem is now that there will be a choice between eat or educate amongst families and we have to step in there and make sure the funding is there to get those kids back to school. So we needed a significant campaign and decided to develop a virtual challenge. We've had over 200 people create challenges for themselves, mostly remotely, um, all done virtually, nine countries and some extraordinary efforts. There were four 24-hour runs, including um, a young man, Sean Bell from Victoria, who ran 184 kilometres in uh, 24 hours. So it's been very exhilarating, very exciting. Uh, it makes me very keen to get out there and get the work done now that we've raised the funds for. Um, do we have enough funds? We don't know. We have enough funds to do our first job, which is get these kids back to school so our big challenge now is to make sure kids don't drop out. We've spent 18 years working in communities to stem high school dropouts. When we started, many of the communities ran 40 to 60% dropout and children were dropping out even in primary school. Over the last six years, we've held, held our dropout rate at less than 2%, which is just exceptional. That's enabled us to get a lot of people educated and into very good employment. You know, what we do is relatively small, but it can make such a massive difference to one family, and through that to a community, and through that to a whole area.